Dude, our, our next guest is American. He's not Canadian. Yeah, I know. I think okay. like a Canadian, though. Oh, he does, and he definitely played like one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's This is awesome, uh, really super awesome, and, and I'm, I'm so stoked to uh, bring on the program right now on this Bacardi Party Friday, the one and only a man who attacks alligators, and he dances in penalty boxes, and he cries when his favorite team wins the Stanley Cup, even when he wasn't on it, and of course, the most outgoing guy ever to play the game with the most charisma ever, Jeremy Roenick. How are you, pal? Oh, I'm great. That's a great, great intro. I, I really worked on it all day. It. Ah, it was <laughs> awesome. Awesome. You guys, you radio guys have some talent, man. I'm telling you. I love it. You know, gift of the gab. It's all we know. Uh, Mr. Roenick, sir, thank you for coming in. Are you doing Are you, are you doing a big junket all day? Is that, is that sort of the deal for you? Yeah, I was actually supposed to be in yesterday and do a, a, a signing at the Oscar. Joshua chapters, um, but this won't surprise you. I get to I fly from San Diego, where I live, to Newark, only to have a, uh, uh, a a switch of flights to fly up to Toronto. And what do I forget? My passport. Oh my goodness! Yeah, way to go. That's with thirteen concussions. I forget my passport, <laughs> and uh, I was stuck. I mean, there's worse places you can be stuck. I got stuck in New York, and I actually uh, I sp- I pay like five hundred dollars to get my 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 passport FedEx out same day you know they don't do that too often but I got same day I got up today when I've been in with the media all day for my book and uh, it's been great I love being up here in Toronto again and just a just a real treat yeah your uh, your book your second book shoot first pass later uh tell us a little bit about the book my man yeah it's a it's the sequel to uh my, my first book which was a bestseller uh the loudest most outspoken hardest hitting man in hockey longest title longest ever, title ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah that's it and so I made this one short first yeah, shoot first pass later it's you know there's a lot of stories that hit the cutting room floor and a lot of stories I think people would still enjoy and then it kind of moves into my analyst you know I go from a professional player to a professional fan where I can I critique and I watch and and you know I I talk about a lot of the players that are maybe overrated in the game some players that are underrated talk about the game in general uh, just a lot of opinionated thoughts. That, and it's a, it's a fast, quick, fun read, and I think everybody will get a kick out of it. Especially in this new ADHD generation. You know, yeah, we, no we need to just sort of have a quick attention, boom, and on to the next. Absolutely. Is, that's I, how it reads? I, I thought about doing an audio uh, audio part, you know, so you can sit in there and have me read it. And do the audio book. I think that would be great, sitting in the car and have me, you know, talking the way I talk and telling stories the way I tell stories. I think that would be a cool cool gist. It, it would be epic. I mean, with the Audible, you know, audible.com and stuff, yeah. like people, people yeah. love that yeah. stuff and then they would feel like they're friends with you. Now, the title of the book uh, reminds me sort of a, of a famous expression, which is don't ask for permission, but ask for forgiveness. Is that kind of in it, jest it, where it's it, coming from? Well, it's kind of, it's, it, if, you, if you know me, which we've had some encounters, we've had some fun, hmm. um, I really don't think about what I'm going to do before I do it. I just do No it. filter. No filter. I just do it, I say it, and then I worry about what's going to happen afterwards. So when you think about, shooting first you shoot don't even think about passing because that's that's you know you're not going to score by making the pass you're going to score by shooting and for me it's kind of like the uh you compare it to not thinking before i do something and worrying about what's going to happen after so go after it and then worry about the alt the the altercations after as jeremy ronick has has evolved in life uh from his early playing days to then uh you know later and 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 retiring to to broadcasting to being a family man all this stuff has that ever gone away like has that filter developed a little bit with age or or do you still are you still true to who you've always been uh, I'm very true to who I've always been. And the only thing that I don't have is I don't have the ego that I had. Um, I, I think before I, I thought I was better than a lot of people. I still treated people really good. But um, I, I felt like I could say something at any time and, you know, you can say anything back. I felt like I was invincible. I thought uh, there was a lot of things as a young, when you're a young superstar and you have all the money in the world, you have all the talent in the world, you have, you're sitting on top of the world, you have people trying to get at you, it's really easy to have an ego. So I think I'm still rambunctious. I'm, I'm, the, I'm on the road. I, I'm going to travel 300 days this year alone. Um, my life is as crazy, if not crazier now, but without the ego. And I think that's a much better way to go through life. What, was there a specific day or turning point that that changed for you, or was it just kind of gradually? You know, I, in, in, in 2005, uh, when the lockout ended and I came back, um, I, I had a really big, big, um, big, big burr in my, in my ass about, um, about the league, you know, shutting us down for a You're year. You're pretty outspoken. Yeah, I lost, seven, you know, seven million bucks of salary. 
Um, you know, it was you know, right in your prime time. Oh it's our life. You know, yeah. I, uh, oh you know, God. it's, I, I had a lot of animosity and, mm. you know, I didn't work out during the, during, I, I was spiteful. I actually went to Italy one, one week before training camp opened. And you know, when you go to Italy, you drink wine, you eat a lot of pasta, you come back 10 pounds heavier. Well, I went one, I literally came back on a Saturday from Italy from being there 10 days and camp started on a Monday. So, you know, that's not the way you do things, especially nowadays. And my career went right down, the, right down the can because of it. People didn't want me anymore. Teams didn't want me. People started looking at it. And it was really, it was, a, it was a terrible time in my life that I thought my career was over. Five goals before I hit 500. So I'm like, I'm not even going to hit 500. I'm free agent. Nobody's calling. You know, Doug Wilson called me, who was my first roommate in Chicago, good friend, um, invited me to come to San Jose and finish my career the proper way. But he had no drinking, no uh, no media. You do nothing. You go home. You're outstanding. You're you're perfect uh, perfect teammate. And uh, you know my my career turned around, and I was able to retire playing great hockey. Because if I didn't have that, I I really don't know. I wouldn't be. I probably wouldn't be married right now. I probably, I mean, I'd be a mess. I could be an alcoholic. I could be a lot of things because things weren't going well for me. And I think that humbled me a lot. That's, uh, I mean, your candidness is, is what's always made you great off the ice as well. And, you know, I, I personally love big personalities for any sport. I think it's so important, especially in, in hockey. And listen, I'm buddies with a lot of the dudes and have been throughout the, the you know, the, their careers and whether it's younger or even currently. A lot of guys are pretty dry. And I mean, they're dry yeah. because they focus on the game and they're just good at what they do. Yeah. Personalities make it come alive, humanizes you. Sure. And I think that, you know, with this change and through this book, I'm sure what we're going to read, uh, shoot first and pass later, is recognizing that, you know what, Jeremy Roenick was just a human being. And, yeah. and I think if we look to ourselves, a lot of us have done the same mistakes. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think we're making $7 million a year, <laughs> most of us. But I, and, and I yeah. think that's what makes you so relatable. So it must be nice to still connect to your fans and the current day NHL fans in general. 100%. Um, the, the greatest, one of the greatest things in my life have, have been my fans and supporters and even the people that don't like me and, because it, it makes for, for, for great radio. It makes for great television. It makes for great Twitter. It makes for great uh, confrontation. Just because you have confrontation doesn't mean that you're, you're not having fun. I've always had fun. And uh, you're right. And you know, I've, just, I've just made mistakes in the public eye. And that's a lot harder. So... Um, Hockey players are very respectful. You see them, mm -hmm. and you say dry. They just don't like to put themselves out ahead of the team. Um, but I do, I do agree. Sometimes you need guys to say something witty. You do need guys to do something stupid. You do that brings so much character to it. it you're right. It adds that hu you know, that human element to somebody that you watch on television. And I think it's, it's, it's drastically missing, especially in hockey. Is, yeah, I was going to say, like, is there anyone really, I can't think of anyone in the league even today, currently, that, that is that great personality for the game. Can you think of any? The, the, um, the, the best guy I would think is P.K. Subban. Fair enough. Yeah, P.K. Subban really goes out there and he's in the public. He says whatever he wants. He gives great interview, uh, does crazy things in the locker room, puts stuff on his head. He, he, doesn't, he does not care if he looks like a fool. And what he's doing or he looks stupid or he looks silly he doesn't care because he's having fun and he's bringing people in with him he's entertaining people and then he goes out and he's one of the best players in the game he is unbelievable and, and then what he does he give 10 million dollars to the children's hospital really i mean we need more guys like PK. Hard, hard to argue with a guy like that. You know, I always love those HBO 24-7 series. Uh, were you ever involved in any of those? I wasn't. No, Can you imagine? Oh, no, my jeez. Uh, I think even those wouldn't even have made, uh, made HBO. <laughs> All right, Ronick 24-7. We'll wait till he's retired. Yeah, it was an idea they had back in 05. Um, shoot first, pass later, your second book. Is it is it a bit of a tell-all? Is there is there some sort of disclosure that maybe we, we'd be surprised to read? No, not, I think... I think I had more disclosure in my first book, but there's a couple of, there's a couple more wow moments in this one um, that uh, that you know some of the trouble I got into. I, I, I was <laughs> I've, I've talked a lot today about my book and 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 every time I've talked, I talk about when my wife read the books for the first time oh. and I was with her and about five or six times she would stop and she would look at me with that face and she goes, hmm. <laughs> I never knew that happened. <laughs> You're lucky I found out now. And I'm like, mm, well, that's why I wrote a big book, babe. <laughs> it's just like, mm, it would be nice to know some of these things before you publish it to the world. So, yeah, yeah. It's nice, you know, yeah. You know. <laughs> 
fun. <laughs> How long have you been married for? Uh, this is my 24th year of marriage. Wow. Amazing. Congratulations. Yeah, lucky. <laughs> yes, you are it's, lucky, it's aren't my, you? Yeah, it's, it's not because of me. It's my wife. She's a, she's a true rock. She's, uh, she's as hard as they come, and boy, she's, uh, she's, she's the glue. The, the, the energy that Jeremy Roenick always displayed... It, 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 was that something you still brought in the home life? Like I picture you being like I know you're your father or two. I just picture you being like the coolest dad. You know, I wa you watch just by watching you. I picture you always having that. Uh, Is that the key? My son goes to prep school in Connecticut, right? So he's um, he's a senior now, but it, he he really loves it when I come to school because I'll come to school and I'll be like I'm one of the kids at school. Like I'll come in and I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll gear down into my, in, into my undies, sit in his, in his dorm room and his, his, all of his friends come in like, Hey, what's going on? Hey, what, 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 what you know, what game's on tonight? What are we, you know, who are you betting on tonight? Or who are you doing this? You know? And I act like one of the kids, Love it. you know, tell them stories. I, I swear in front of them, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not like a typical dad. That's like, you know, hi son, how are you doing today? How are your grades? You know, I'm not, I, I like, so my, my, yeah, I'm not the typical dad. I like to have fun. I like to make. I like my kids to say I have a cool dad, and I like their friends to say you have a cool dad. And I think I've accomplished that. Your uh, youthful greatness, I think, is a good way of putting it, uh, and that's what you've always done. And, and and honestly, I've always found you a mentor. My my, you know, I'm not. I was never sports inclined at all. I mean, kinda, but nothing like you know the mm -hmm. way you pros were. And, and but what I had was a personality, and I'd look to yeah. guys like you, the guys with the bigger personalities, and say, you know, I, I love it. We need that, and I'm so happy your career is going so well in the sports world now. Working here, at NBC, right? Yeah, NBC. Yeah, it's going great. great. Your team is wrapping me up, unfortunately, but Jerry. Jeremy Roenick, before you go, and before we promote one more time, shoot first, pass later, your, your second book, I have to address the first book, because within that first book, your big seller, uh, The Fast Crazy Life of Hockey's Most Outspoken and Most Colorful Personality, got it in. I was in that book. Yes, you were. You wrote about me in your book, and I've always wanted to say thank you for that. Wasn't it, <laughs> Was that one of the cooler? And I love playoffs. I love playoffs because of what it brings, but I love playoffs in Toronto because I know something crazy is going to happen. <laughs> and you and I had a, a very cool incident at, I'd say, what is it, 4.30, maybe 4.35 in the morning, night, night, right, the day of the game. And uh, <laughs> pound on my door, big knock on the door, and I, uh, here it comes. So I look out the door and... <laughs> Guess who's standing outside the door, you know, just ready to wake me up and do something crazy. So I went in and I filled up the trash can with water in the bathroom. Oh, wow. And then I opened the door and I threw the water and I can hear him out there saying, he's going to, I hear him inside. I hear him. He's going to answer the door. I hear him. And I threw the water at him and I closed the door and he's running down the hall. He threw water at me. I can't believe it. <laughs> so what does he do? He comes back and knocks again. Oh my God. And I answered, and he, I answered the door, and he goes, "My my producers and my all the guys at the sta station want to talk to you." I'm like, "Get in here!" I we brought you came in. I talked on the phone with the guys at the station. <laughs> inviting, this is five o'clock in the morning. We had a game that night. It was incredible. And, I, and it was. Jerry Ronick, and, and the, you know, you you playing a part of that prank, but not taking it too seriously and recognizing it for what it was. You know, and I actually have a lot of regrets from the things I used to do when I was young. But but I, that moment to me was was sort of one of the pinnacles of my career because I recognized that there's actually cool people who can get this kind of stuff. We're not trying to harm you. We're not. Trying, and and then the thing that I respected about you the most, sir, was when you you grabbed the phone. You said, you know what, I'm up this early anyway because I end up calling my kids every morning yeah. before they get ready yeah, with yeah, you know when yeah. my wife back and i had so much respect for you for that comment alone yeah that's good um, I, that I got, was, sorry that, that yeah. was fun that was yeah. fun times <laughs> man i gotta ask you why didn't you punch him in the face <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. <laughs> you know I, it's what i love about sports because it's the it's the competition and you know what i love the fans and listen i love when fans get involved you know wow. they believe that they they believe that they dictate games yeah they're in the fan they're in the stands they dictate games they yell they dictate games if they come knock on your door they're trying to get the upper hand they're helping their team that's okay for me <laughs> well he ended up scoring the clinching the game winning goal that year that's too right. against the Leafs in overtime that's in game right. six so yeah. that's right that's right i just led to the curse jeremy roenick uh, uh honestly man if, if if this book is even half as good as you are uh 
on the ice, away from the ice as a personality, then we got ourselves another bestseller. Uh, go and get it. Shoot first, pass later. Uh, Jeremy Roenick, uh, this book is going to be phenomenal. I can't. Where can we get it? Is it just Amazon? Any, any, anywhere they send uh, sell books, chapters all over. You can get them at, at Costco. Uh, anywhere here. I'm going to be in Burlington and Mississauga tomorrow signing. Uh, or you can just go on Amazon and order it right off of Amazon. It's really easy. Awesome, man. I wish you didn't have to go. Your team's uh, telling you you got to go. Uh, hopefully, we can stay in touch and get hey, you on the program again sometime. I'll give you my phone number. You call me anytime. I will do Obviously, so. Do you, you, you want to throw can. water at Jay or me? Do you want to get us back? you want to get us again? Okay. <laughs> Jeremy Roenick, everyone, and go follow this guy on Twitter, Jeremy underscore Roenick. I don't know who the prick was who took the original one, but anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll be back in a second. Thanks for hanging out with us on a Bacardi Party Friday here on the Todd Shapiro Show, brought to you by our good friends at Pizza Pizza. We'll be back in a second on Sirius XM.